Thank you all for being here tonight. And uh, Mrs. Carrie Lamb, I'd like to start with you. And you did give us some very strong hints about the importance of the International Business Committee. We have representatives um, from the international business groups, chambers, uh, many international chambers here tonight. So I wonder if you could go a little bit further. Uh, as chief executive, you may be a little bit busy. So I'm wondering how you'll be able to continue that commitment to the international business community, how you might continue to get things done. Well, I'll make sure that uh, whoever is uh, going to be the next chief secretary, uh, chairman of the IBC, will continue that uh, spirit of uh, um, hardworking and uh, swift response <laughs> and resolute style to address the concerns of the International Business Committee. But seriously, on this question about working with the International Business Committee, I want to start from the basic law. Because under the basic law, Hong Kong is given a high degree of autonomy in conducting her own external affairs, not diplomacy. Diplomacy falls under MFA <laughs> that the commissioner will look after us. But in terms of external affairs, whether it's trade, investment, culture, we have a high degree of autonomy. So um, I have um, a full list of things I want to do, uh, capitalizing on this high degree of autonomy in conducting our external affairs. That's why I uh, suggested that perhaps Kurt and myself, we will work harder to identify those areas that need government-to-government -government action. So I, I, of course, appreciate a lot of business-to-business, business-to-government -business, business initiatives, but there are things which need to be done on a government-to-government -government basis. For example, in the negotiations of free trade agreement, uh, we are now, we have only signed four, actually, up to now, FTAs. We are at the final stage of concluding an FTA with the ASEAN um, member uh, nations. And uh, Australia and Hong Kong has just started to explore or to conduct a trade review leading to a full FTA negotiations. So I want really to do more on the free trade agreements. And another area is, of course, the double taxation. Because to business, the avoidance of double taxation is extremely important. So again, this is an area that we could focus more because in terms of number of uh, double taxation agreements signed, I think we are only one third of Singapore. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, room to catch up. And then even on other things that concern culture that uh, Consul General has put a lot of emphasis and education there is uh, room for concluding bilateral agreements between our respective cultural and educational institutions so that uh, our people, our young people, will benefit. So I'm very pleased to hear that Kurt has now uh, told us that visa-free is not something impossible. <laughs> uh, through hard work on uh, him and of him and, and ourselves, uh, perhaps we will have a chance to, have, to visit the United States without a visa in the foreseeable future. Uh, but if I may just put in, I'm a bit greedy, Kurt, I put in another request. I've been putting this to your predecessors. <laughs> and why, why don't we sign a working holiday scheme so that our young people, American young people, could come to Hong Kong to have fun and to work, and Hong Kong young people could go to America to spend a few months uh, working and playing. So over to you, Kurt. <laughs> Over to you, Kurt. <laughs> Hong Kong is another city that you've served in as a diplomat, but I know you've served in, in many cities across the region, and I can tell you're a fan of Hong Kong. So what I'd really like to know is, why is Hong Kong different for you as a posting, or different as a cosmopolitan city? Well, thank you, and um, perhaps first to, to comment on, on uh, uh, Chief Executive Elect's comments on, on my agenda. The, um, I've taken careful notes mentally. Thomas has written it all down. Uh, fortunately enough, I'm headed to Washington next week and, and, and uh, seriously, we'll, we'll reflect um, uh, your comments both in, in the, the, the spirit and the tone of tonight's occasion, but, but also the, the substance. And I do think that there is an opportunity um, for um, more government-to-government uh, -government cooperation, which would be a benefit to, to both sides. The um, uh, Hong Kong is just is uh, my my children. I have three kids. Came here as little children to visit once, and then they came back here again for the holidays this year. And they and they all kept saying the same thing: Dad, "This place is really cool. This is this is like really a nice place. Um, 
why can't we stay all the time? And I said, well, because you have to go back and earn money to pay off your student loans. Um, but the, um, the things have su surprised me about Hong Kong. It's really green. It's really a very green city. A lot, lots of places to walk out in the, in the, in the, um, in the jungle. It, it feels like jungle to me. Um, it's also, uh, I've noticed, very visually compelling that a lot of people reflected on that in their comments. And, and um, uh, one fact, maybe you all know this already, it was new to me, uh, Hong Kong has more skyscrapers than, than any other city, if you define one as over 14 stories, uh, more than New York. And um, that, that, that three-dimensionality of, uh, of Hong Kong I find really fascinating, particularly when I try to walk home from, from work. The, um, but on, on the serious side, uh, Hong Kong is really um, a very special place to do business, uh, both regionally and, and, uh, and locally. And, and again, I'm repeating myself from earlier, but, but that goes back to the, to the business environment, which is, is founded upon uh, the respect for, um, as, this, as the chief executive elect put them, uh, the, the, the traditions and values of, of, of Hong Kong. Um, but the, the key aspects of the business environment in terms of its reliability um, and trustworthiness of, of, of this as a location to do business. And I know that you all uh, believe that, and that's why you're here. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy to be in Hong Kong. Thank you. Jack, you've been in Hong Kong for a while. I think since 1994, when you were a wee young thing. <laughs> um, but just traveling back a little bit, it must have been a very sentimental time in 1997. Can you remember where you were on the night? Uh, yes, that's right, Tara. I came out when I was uh, five years old in 1981. <laughs> Youngest partner ever in the history of Paul Weiss. Um, yeah, but uh, no, that's, that's uh, an, an alternate fact. <laughs> um, but, but it is true, I was here, um, I came in 1994, and, and I was here uh, for the celebration in 1997. Uh, I remember the night of June 30 very, very well. Uh, I went to the party at the American Club uh, to mark the handover, and despite the rain, which I don't think anybody who was in Hong Kong at that time would ever forget, um, a number of us ventured out onto the, the balcony terrace there to lean on the railing with our glasses of champagne and look down as uh, Prince Charles and Governor Patton walked across Queen's Pier and got onto the Royal Yacht Britannia and sailed out of Hong Kong Harbor. And um, it was really a very, very palpable sense of, of history uh, in that. And, um, also uh, a real festive sense, a sense of celebration, celebration uh, uh, not uh, both of the uh, wonderful things that have been done uh, looking backwards um, and the values that were being left behind, uh, but also looking forward to uh, a very exciting future ahead. Um, I remember going to bed quite late that night, getting up the next morning, turning on the uh, uh, U.S. cable news and um, the, the, seeing the coverage dominated by pictures of PLO vehicles crossing the border in the middle of the night and, and the protest at LegCo. Um, obviously a very selective um, vision of the experience of that night and it was a powerful message to me of how difficult it can be uh, sometimes to tell our Hong Kong story, protect, uh, particularly perhaps in, in the United States and how much responsibility it, it, that puts on those of us who are out here to tell that story uh, effectively. Um, Fast forward, as a, as a coda, coda on the experience, fast forward several years, uh, I was on the board of the American Club and we were informed that the barrier around that terrace had been uh, out of code for many years. I, that's just between us, please. Um, uh, but we had to replace it and um, design was put forward which got rid of that railing um, and I, objected passionately to this new uh, design on the grounds that it had historical significance. It was the place that we leaned on and looked down uh, as history passed. Um, suffice it to say that that, like Queen's Pier itself, was one historical preservation 
project that was not destined for success. Uh, but a few weeks later, I did receive a heavy package delivered from the American Club, and I opened it up with curiosity and pulled out a foot-long piece of that railing mounted on a wooden stand, uh, and it now sits proudly in my dining room as a souvenir of what really was uh, a time that had enormous significance uh, to me and still does. Thank you. Last but not least, Michael Wall. You've been here for many years. You could be in Longer Hollywood. Longer than Jack, yeah. <laughs> I was three when I came, so. <laughs> That's a little more credit. You've chosen to make Hong Kong your home. Can you tell us why? Well, one is uh, family history and then opportunity. Uh, my, on my father's side of the family, my father's from Shandong and then came through Hong Kong, received a scholarship uh, to Arizona State and took the boat across the uh, water. He was, I think he was 18. And uh, so we, uh, his brothers and sisters still uh, reside in, in Hong Kong. So we have some family history here. And then both my brother and I were invited uh, to make films back in 1983 for a very prominent film company at that time, Cinema City. And so that sort of kicked off my entertainment career. And uh, I can say, uh, not proudly, but after 34 years, my Cantonese is uh, still not up to par. I think most of the local people here will, will tell you. So uh, very nice to be at an English-speaking event. This is much more comfortable for me, Carrie. If I had to speak to Carrie in Cantonese, I'd probably uh, get through two or three sentences, especially talking about uh, uh, political subjects, because my Cantonese is more like street uh, street style. Uh, that's that's pretty much how I learned my, <laughs> on film sets. But um, I can say this: that uh, all joking aside, I've had a great uh, career in entertainment. Uh, presently, I'm building a brand. Uh, after many years in entertainment, I've been met so many. Uh, great people in different businesses. It opens up the doors for a lot of opportunity. So I've, uh, about four years ago, registered my first intellectual property. I get to work with the world's top brands like Ramoa, Baccarat, uh, Giorgio Fadon, and, and relate them to my, my own brand. I mean, that is, you know, Hong Kong allows me to live out my dream. Uh, another dream I had was to be a commercial pilot. And I can tell you it's very cool, 15 days a week, that I get a rock up in the harbor at 1,500 feet, look at the peninsula of hotel and make an approach to the top of the hotel. And I fly around Hong Kong all week long. I can tell you it's one of the most beautiful places uh, on the planet. And I think uh, going back maybe 10, 15 years ago, it wasn't as popular uh, to, to hike and do a lot of outdoors activities, but more and more now we see people really using the environment. And I urge uh, the government to, to uh, make more uh, of these areas around Hong Kong uh, available, maybe build, building infrastructure for, you know, X-game culture or, uh, you know, sports culture, uh, because Hong Kong has some magnificent uh, beaches and uh, mountain peaks for hiking, and there's just a lot of land out there that's I think underutilized, so, so I should take you flying sometime, Carrie, and show you some of my favorite places. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, as a Hong Kong citizen, a dual citizenship, I have a U.S. passport, still a holder of a United States passport, and I have a three-star Hong Kong ID card. That means I'm of Chinese descent, so I'm like right down the middle. I am your ambassador for uh, Chinese-American... Uh, <laughs> activities. Just joking. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I'm a, a very grateful individual and have a just immense opportunity in Hong Kong. So I hope I can do my part and give back to the community and, and build opportunity for our, our next generation. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for sharing your views. Uh, dreams and experiences here. I'm going to pass it back to Angie to take it to the next step.